Hello there, it's April 2020 and you know what that means. It means self-isolation. I'm so bored that I decided that I was going to implement a monitoring system for all of the devices that I have on my network. And to you do that, we're going to use Grafana and Prometheus. They are both open source. And I'm going to monitor five laptops that I have here running macOS. And I'm also going to monitor a couple of Raspberry Pis um, running on ARM architecture. So let's go ahead and do it. First, I wanna show you an overview of my network and how my network looks like, because that's important in order to understand the system. This is the network of my apartment. So we have the internet and we have the ISP's router, and this is the home network, but then I have a my own lab, which is my own router with my own uh, devices. So they are isolated from, from everything else. So I have a bunch of laptops. Some of them are connected using Wi-Fi. Some of them are connecting using Ethernet. And I have Raspberry Pi 3, 4, and a 0 connected using Wi-Fi. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this guy, the Raspberry, Port, Raspberry Pi 4, as the server. This one is going to be running the Prometheus server and the Grafana server. Now, if in case you don't know, Grafana is this open source uh, tool uh, that you can use to create dashboards and see stuff is pretty cool. Go ahead and check it out. And Prometheus is the, the backend that we're going to use to store the data from, from our devices. So what you can do is you can go ahead and clone this Git repo. I'm gonna leave the links in the description. So this is where I have all the code that I created today. Uh, of course, because it's my own repo, it doesn't have a readme file. So yeah, that's wrong and forget about this file. Anyway, so I have two main folders. One is the server. That's the one that is going to install the um, Prometheus server and Grafana server. And then the other one is the client. The client is the one that is going to be installed in each device. So the cool thing about Prometheus is that, let's say you have thousands, well, not thousands, but let's say you have a lot of devices that you wanna monitor. So Prometheus has a pool, um, um, it, the way it, it grabs metrics from the devices is using pool. So each device will have to expose an endpoint and Prometheus will go ahead and, and hit that endpoint and grab all the metrics. That's pretty cool. Uh, that way you avoid overloading the network if every device is pushing the metrics. Uh, in this case, Prometheus goes ahead and pulls the metrics that it needs. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it means that you need to install a, an agent in each device. That agent is going to be the Prometheus node exporter. So that's what you have here, essentially. If you go to client, I have a folder for Mac OS, another one for the Raspberry Pis. Uh, Raspberry Pi 0 needs this one, and the Raspberry Pi 4 needs this one. But anyway, they, they are all pretty much the same. If you go there, what you are going to see is a script that installs the agent. This agent is essentially downloading the node exporter from GitHub, and putting it somewhere in the system. It's usually user local bin and then it's going to go ahead and cre create a service so this agent runs uh, on startup always in the background you don't have to think about it in the case of mac os we are going to use a launch agent and that's pretty cool because i have never done this before i had no idea how to do it so let's go ahead and have a look at that um mac os this is how the Asian definition looks like. So you have to give it a name. It's, it's, it's written in XML, that's, I don't like it, but anyways. So you give it a name, then you specify under program which one is the binary that you want to execute, and then you say run at load true and keep alive true, and that's it. This would be the, equ the equivalent for Linux of a service. So in Linux you have your standard service definition, uh, which again, does the same thing. It goes ahead and executes this binary. So that's pretty much it. So what you have to do here 
and I'm gonna go ahead and do it with you guys is I'm going to install the um, Prometheus agent here in this local laptop so that will create an endpoint and that endpoint is going to expose metrics so let's go ahead and do it I'm going to the client I'm going to Mac OS because this is a Mac OS laptop Prometheus and I'm going to execute install so what this script essentially does is first it downloads the file from the it, this is the official github so don't worry about that it gives it a name then it goes ahead and extracts that tar file and puts it in user local bin and to do that you need to be sudo that's why it's asking me for my password there you go and now if you do ls in use local bin you can see that it's there that's the file that we just created the next one is you need to so so the file is there you can run it anytime you want but in order to make it run automatically on startup you need to create this service that I was telling you about. So you essentially need to put this file, the service definition here. So that's what it does. It puts that file there and then it creates the, the service, which is that. So now to check that, if you wanna check that the service exists, you can do um, launch CTL list. That gives you a list of all the services that are running. And you can grab for node, you can see that here it is. This is the service that we just created. And we can check that that works. So what, what that um, agent does is it creates a, a an endpoint running on local host, uh, which exposes metrics, metrics of the system. So if you refresh, you can see that these metrics keep refreshing. So that's it. Now in this laptop, I have an, an endpoint that is constantly exposing metrics and that's it. I don't have to do anything else in this laptop. So you can do the same thing in every single laptop or server or Raspberry Pi or anything that you have. And each device is going to be exposing the metrics. The next thing that you need to do now is go ahead and install the um, Prometheus server. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I told you that I was going to do it in this Raspberry Pi 4 because that's the one that is always connected to my network and it's always running. So let's use that one. Um, let's SSH into the Raspberry Pi 4 using LAN. Here I am, projects, home. Okay, this is the git repo that I that I showed you. So here we're gonna install the server. Server. We're gonna see what's in Prometheus. So the Prometheus part is going to be running in Docker. Why? Because everything should run in Docker. Docker is great. I love it. So this is fairly simple, as you may see. So the way you run it is docker run, it runs as a daemon, so in the background, giving it a name, I'm saying restart always, so in case the container crashes, it will restart. Uh, this will also ensure that the container runs on startup. I'm going to expose a port. This is the port that Prometheus uses. So Prometheus goes ahead and pulls metrics from each agent, but then it exposes a, um, an API that you can use to pull data from Prometheus. So that's the port that it uses. Uh, I'm running the official Prometheus, so nothing fancy there. And the only thing that I'm doing here is I'm mounting a volume. So essentially what I'm mounting is a folder with this file, prometheus.yaml, because that's the, that's the only configuration that we need to provide to Prometheus. Prometheus will go to etc Prometheus and it will look for this file. And this file is 
pretty simple. So essentially here you define which endpoints you want to pull and which endpoints, endpoints you want to grab data from. So it's a YAML, it's fairly easy. For You can create a list of jobs, you give it a name uh, to each job. In this case, the names represent my, my laptop. So this is a MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2011. And then you say, what's, what's the, the end point of this um, device? Where can I go and pull the metrics? And in this case, because this is a laptop, sometimes it's connected using Wi-Fi and sometimes it's connected using Ethernet. I'm giving it both IP addresses for, for the Wi-Fi and for the Ethernet. So this is the IP address of the computer and this is the port that the agent is exposing. So if you go ahead, I already have the agent installed in that laptop. So if you go ahead and ping that one, metrics, you should see, maybe not that one, Maybe that's the Ethernet or the Wi-Fi. So let's try the other one. You know what? The laptop is sleeping. Oh no, there it is. So that endpoint shows you the metrics of that laptop. And essentially each device is running that Prometheus node exporter, which is exposing these, these metrics. Anyway, you just go ahead and create for each server uh, one of these definitions, and that's it. Then when you start Prometheus doing this Docker run, Prometheus will run and it will expose something in this port. So let's have a look at that. This is the, uh, first we need to run it. Right, so let's just do run. Oh, this is not executable. sudo run. It already exists. It looks like it's already running. Uh, Docker ps. Yes, there it is. It's running. It's been running for three hours. I or yes. I already created this before. Anyway, so it's there. Let's have a look and see see what's that. I'm going to go ahead and hit the API. What's the IP of this box? I think it's three. Yes. So this is the port the port that the Prometheus server exposes. Um, you can go ahead and run queries here. I'm not going to get into the Prometheus query language. That's a whole different thing. Uh, but you can go and check in status targets. You can see all the devices that you have defined here. So for each one of these, you have a corresponding section here. Um, for example, let's take this one. You can see this one is down and this one is up. So this one is probably the Ethernet um, IP, which is not connected to the Ethernet right now. And this one is the Wi-Fi and it is connected to Wi-Fi. So this one is down, this one is up. There you go. Uh, this one is completely down. Uh, yeah, so that's Prometheus. Uh, it's cool, but you can't, it's, it's not very um, user friendly. So what you can do next is you can go ahead and install Grafana and it will look something like this. So the way you do it is again, you go to the repo, you go to server Grafana and there you have a install script. Now let's have a look at that script. So what this one does, uh, first you need to give it a home directory. This is where it's going to store the data, the logs, uh, all that stuff. So you define that and then you define what version do you want. In this case, this runs on a Raspberry Pi, so I'm using the ARM uh, version. So it goes ahead and creates the home directory, then it downloads the binary. 
then it puts the binary um, somewhere in, in the Grafana home. It owns everything and then cleans up. The next thing it does, it creates a script. This script is essentially a startup script, which is going to call the executable and it's going to provide this, bio, this um, parameter. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to copy the script that it just created on this folder and it's going to put it in Grafana Home and then it's going to create the service definition file. Service definition file will look just like your standard Linux uh, service. And the reason I'm creating that is because I'm using the, the Grafana Home variable here. So anyway, I'm creating that and then I'm putting that in the standard Linux um, place for services and I create that service here. So that's pretty much it, that's Grafana. Uh, I've already done that, so Grafana is already running. You can check that by doing system CTL status Grafana and you can see that it's active and running. So Grafana, what it does is it exposes the port 3000. So let's go ahead and open an incognito session so I can log in. So it's going to ask me for a user. The default one is admin, admin. Uh, and then when you um, connect, you can actually change the passwords and things like that. So I created a user. You can create users and give it passwords. So that's what I did. Now here you can do a couple of things. You can create dashboards, you can create data sources. So the first thing you need to do is you need to connect to the Prometheus data source um, because Prometheus is the one that is pulling all the metrics from the servers. I've already done that, but it's super easy. You just go add data source. Prometheus is gonna be the first one that shows here because Prometheus and Grafana are very good friends. They like each other. So you just go ahead and select that. You give it the IP. In this case, it's running in the same machine, so localhost, but if not, you give it the IP. And uh, you can just save and test it, and that's it. Then you can create dashboards. Uh, the way I like to create dashboards, again, creating dashboards in Grafana is a whole different world. Uh, but you you can use existing dashboards. So if you have a look at Grafana Porter dashboard, it already exists. Someone already uh, made this one. The one that I like is Node Exporter Full. So you do that and it gives you an ID this number. So you can go and do import, you paste the number, oh sorry, wrong number. And it will go ahead and find it. So you can select which data source you want to use to populate this, this dashboard. You can put it in a folder, you can create folders or kind of things and import it. And that's it. I'm not going to do it because I already have it. Um, anyway, so once you do that, you're going to have something like this. This is the dashboard that we created. It's pretty cool. You have a bunch of stuff here. You have, I don't know, you can check the disk, you can check the memory, you can check CPU, all things like that and you can select the data source. Here we have only one, is the Prometheus one, and then you can select the job. In this case, the job is going to be each machine that Prometheus is pulling data from. So you can go ahead and select this particular laptop. Uh, yeah, that's the host, that's the port, that's fine. And you get an overview. You can change the scale of this. You can show me only the last 30 minutes or so. Uh, you can go as long as you want and you can set auto refreshing here. So everything five seconds is going to be refreshing itself.
that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and test something here. Um, let's do, let's use this one. This is a script that creates a bunch of processes. And let's see what happens to my machine. So here I'm monitoring this this particular machine. I'm going to open a terminal and I am going to run that. So that what it does is it creates uh, a bunch of processes here using seven processes using 90% of the CPU. So you see that CPU goes pretty much 100% here. Um, we should hopefully, hopefully see that in the Grafana dashboard. So let's give it a couple of seconds and actually let's make this smaller. Last five minutes. And let's see what happens. This is running. Oh, there you go. So this one went all the way up to 85%. And there you see the first spike. And yeah, essentially that. You also can see what happens to the network. I don't know what I was doing here. Uh, you can see what happens to the CPU. You can see everything. I believe, I'm not an expert in Grafana, but I believe that you can set alerts and things like that. So that's also pretty cool. So anyways, that was a um, brief description of my project. This is what I do on Sunday mornings when I can't get out of my apartment because we have this um, quarantine going on here in Sydney. Anyway, guys, um, let me know if this was helpful or not. Let me know if you want to um, know something else. I'm thinking about doing the same thing for um, Fluent D and um, Elasticsearch. That's another kind of like stack for logging. This is for metrics, the other one is for logging. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed. See you.